so this is what we have written narrow band fading narrow band fading where the delay spread is comparatively much less than the inverse of your transmitted bandwidth okay have you all written this the received signal in this case r of t is given by the real part of u of t e raised to j 2 pi fct sigma n alpha n of t e raised to minus j phi n of t then under narrow band conditions this equation will become r r of t is equal to the real part of sigma n alpha n of t e raised to minus j phi n of t into e raised to j 2 pi fc fct or in other words it is divided into two parts ri of t cos 2 pi fct minus rq of t sin 2 pi fct the received signal in conditions of narrow band fading is given by r of t and this r of t consists of two parts one is i and what another one is q r i of t and r q of t the next slide we'll see what is i r i of t and r q of t there are two components we have seen r i the phase component and r q the quadrature component so r i of t is given by sigma n is equal to 1 to n of t alpha n cos phi n of t the quadrature component r q of t is equal to n is equal to 1 to n of t alpha n sin phi n of t where phi n of t is given by 2 pi fc to n of t minus phi dn minus 5 not we have both in phase and quadrature components in the received signal next auto correlation cross correlation and power spectral density so in order to derive the equations for auto correlation cross correlation and power spectral density we have the following assumptions first one for the nth multipath component the term 2 pi fc to n in phi n of t changes rapidly relative to all other phase terms in the expression second thing is that phi n of t is uniformly distributed between minus pi to pi in that case e expectation expectation of r of ri of t the in phase component will be equal to expectation of sigma n is equal to 1 to n of t 
alpha n of t cos phi n of t and that would be equal to 0 we have another component e of ri of t and rq of t in phase component and quadrature component so taking the value of the quadrature component also that is sin phi m of t which is at a comparatively different phase with the in phase component these two are not correlated ri of t and rq of t are uncorrelated and since they are jointly Gaussian process this means that they are independent the received in phase component ri of t and rq of t are uncorrelated and since they are Gaussian they are independent now let us find the autocorrelation for the first one we will find the in phase received signal autocorrelation the received signal consists of signals received from n multi paths let us consider ARI to be the autocorrelation function for the received in phase component RI of T in that place A RI of T will be a function of T and T plus tau since we are finding autocorrelation it will be at a, at a time gap of tau from T so T comma T plus tau that is equal to the expectation of Ri of T and Ri of T plus tau that is equal to summation E alpha n square plus both the cos terms E cos phi n and phi m phi n of t plus cos phi n of t plus tau phi n of t is given by 2 pi f c tau n minus 2 pi f d d n d n is a Doppler shift t minus 5 naught phi naught change in the phase similarly phi n of t plus tau is equal to 2 pi f c tau n minus 2 pi f d n t plus tau minus phi naught so this value will become 0.5 e cos 2 pi f d n tau plus 0.5 e cos 4 pi f c tau n minus 4 pi f d n t minus 2 pi f c phi naught now autocorrelation of 
in phase and quadrature component a r i r q t t plus tau derive the equation for the autocorrelation function of multipath propagation wireless communication system in case of narrow band fading this could be a probable question in your exam next derivation for power spectral densities of both in phase and quadrature components ri of t and rq of t what is power spectral density power spectral density is the fourier transform of auto correlation function so the respective power spectral densities are obtained by taking the fourier transform of the auto correlation function and the delay parameter here we consider it as tau since the auto correlation functions are equal power spectral density is also must be equal right so power spectral density denoted by sri of f that will be equal to srq the in phase and the quadrature components sri of f will be equal to srq of f that will be equal to the fourier transform of the auto correlation function a r i of tau therefore the power spectral density which is the fourier transform of a r i of tau is is given by 2 p r by pi f d into 1 by root of 1 minus f by fd the whole square where f the modulus function f is less than fd you can see that the power spectral density curve with respect to you can see the power spectral density curve with respect to the you can see the power spectral density curve with respect to the change in frequencies given here in case of narrow band fading what happens to power spectral density the next thing what we are going to do is that we are going to compare all the different kinds of path losses that is going to happen 
in case of narrow band fading so here we have graphically represented this taking into the consideration about the main three path losses first free space path loss path loss alone second shadowing and path loss and third is multi path plus shadowing plus path loss the graphical representation of the change in power in terms of dp by the distance comparative to the reference point d not so in case of narrow band fading you can see that the distance in a few meters and the range of power you can see that the variation is comparatively lower it represents the carrier wavelength next is the wide band fading mode